It's inconsiderate behavior that's the issue, and that's what you should be on the lookout for. Let me give you an example. I, I need this to live. Uh, uh, this, this here is the only reason I could afford groceries. I'm 25. You literally um, studied criminology in college. If One semester we took criminology, for Christ's sakes. What the fuck are we training to be, Batman? I did pretty badly in community college in high school. I didn't have a lot of friends, and my grades were pretty terrible, and occasionally working part-time jobs. Top 10 useless college degrees and classes. Philosophy, like sociology and psychology, is one of those degrees that people do when they're not quite sure what vocation they want to follow. It's a fun time four years, open to stoners, egocentrics, and those that love the sound of their own voice, who will finish the course even more confused to what they want to do in life, and probably end up working at a convenience store. I lived in Los Angeles for 22 years. Where does my family politically align? A progressive liberal, not leftist, but they're pretty progressive liberal. Like, my whole life, my whole life is YouTube, Twitch, streaming, politics, art, video editing, and video games. That's lit my whole life can fit within that box. And my family is so wonderful. My, my, my dad is, um, works in Hollywood, and my mom does administrative work. My younger brother um, now works as a chef, but he's really, really good. He worked at like a four-star hotel restaurant. I had a really good family, and, and because of that, I never lacked for self-esteem because my parents were always really supportive, very loving and caring parents. Yeah, people believed in me, yeah. Why? Because you're a 20-year-old little c and you have no idea how the world works. Because you think you deserve better, you think you're too interesting a person, which is a mathematical guarantee that you have no skills and nothing to offer anybody in the world. For two decades, you've just been taking and sucking up education and love and food and iPods, just sucking it up and and judging it, no, it's pretty good, but not really, you know, I like that one. You've just been selecting and absorbing shit that you didn't f***ing earn. For two decades, you've just been a burden. I guarantee you, you have never done anything for anybody, ever. It's inconsiderate behavior that's the issue, and that's what you should be on the lookout for. Let me give you an example. In late 2017, I became friends with somebody named Poppy. Uh, we talked for a period of several months, and uh, over the course of that prolonged conversation, we discussed a great many things. And uh, I thought at the time that these were perfectly normal, healthy conversations. Poppy started accusing me quite publicly in that Discord channel of having sexually harassed her over the course of our friendship, over the course of the few months. And I'm a horny bastard. So, you know, um, I, a few days ago, some uh, screenshots of the DMs that I had had with Poppy, so these are about year and a half old screenshots, were collected. Um, and this then became a very, very public spectacle. Um, but nonetheless, I was brought on to Destiny's stream to explain myself. And I did a, to put not too fine a point on it, very bad job explaining myself. I was nervous. So I said that I had behaved cringily. I believe that I said, again, imperfect memory, that I had been at times a little creepy, uh, that I had pushed boundaries, that I had been uh, um, overly uh, facilitated towards sexual conversation. And people called me a harasser, a sexual harasser, um, which we, which we know exists. I mean, I, if you're watching this video, you're probably lefty. You know, you're probably with me on that. We know that male entitlement towards sexuality is a thing. I, I thought, no, I'm not a sexual harasser. I just did those things I just described. I just pushed boundaries i not a sexual harasser i just did those things i just described <coughs> just talked about sex maybe too much i just was uh uh perhaps not as cognizant of the conversational partner's discomfort as i could have been um do, do those things make me a sexual harasser and i've thought about it over the past few days 
The question seems a little leading. You can probably tell where I got. And the answer is that it doesn't really matter what I think. The logs are public. They're out there. People can see them. People have read them. And then they have accused me of engaging in sexual harassment. And far be it from me, somebody who smashes linguistic prescriptivists, to say that I've engaged in those behaviors, but not sexual harassment. Sexual harassment is what we define it to be, and the definition seems to, be, have, laid, seems to have been laid out. It's inconsiderate behavior that's the issue, and that's what you should be on the lookout for. Let me give you an example. What a beautiful day it is to get indefinitely suspended from your preferred streaming platform. The gist of it is that I was streaming on Twitch, hundreds of people watching, 400 people, spectacular stream, as good as I went pretty hard criticizing Israel there. And uh, I was reading a very fashy article which was defending Israeli imperialism in the Middle East, and I, uh, and, uh, got myself an indefinite suspension. If you say you're a woman, you're a woman, but if you say you have a vagina, you, you, what was that? You don't necessarily have a vagina. Um, you really like to say that whole philosophical linguistic. It's like you think that by talking about the nature of words, you can kind of get away with a little bit more. But I don't think that that's really very um, fair of you. I think that you think that you're very smart and you think that by talking fast and kind of throwing in some big words, you could trick your audience. And I'm sure well, I'm you not tricking. Wait, wait, I'm not tricking anyone. I've been very clear on my point. This you isn't a matter really of science. No, 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 hold on, hold I mean, on. This isn't a matter of science. This is a matter of linguistics. The words sex and gender have different meanings in an academic sense and in a sociological sense. Sometimes they're used colloquially as the two because most people who are assigned male at birth, like they're sexed male, are going to identify as a man and vice versa for women. So normally they're interchangeable, like in common usage, but in academic theory-driven sense where the real data and truth goes on. Ah, ah. You know, where people really try to figure out what's up, these two things have different definitions. Nothing here is anti-biological. It's only the identity that can be changed at one's, you know, uh, discretion. And that's well within the lines of what's permitted philosophically and linguistically. Uh, if you want to talk about, like, gender theory, we can get into that. But, like, nobody here is delusional. And gender, also, as a social construct, is just something that exists. It's not something that there's, like, data on to determine what is or is not the right social construct. I mean, is that even worth arguing? If I give you a sandwich and it was 96% shit and 4% ham, would you be willing to consider that a ham sandwich? Um, but it's not like language is being destroyed. We're not destroying the concept of gender. Now that's the next step, because I want to destroy the concept of gender. They certainly don't believe that they have any biological grounding, that there's any such thing as a human being. It's all socially constructed, which is really convenient if what you want to do is be the author of an entirely social constructed u utopia. That's what it is, gender that. identity. Um, and it's got plenty of research and theory if you want to get into it, but that's what gender is. It's a social construct. Okay, if you go to Ethmo online, we can research the etymology of gender, and here, if you go to the third paragraph, it says the male or female sex sense is attested in English from the early 15th century as sex took on erotic qualities in the 20th century. Gender came to be the usual English word for sex of a human being, in which it was used at first regarded as colloquial or humorous. There it is. It's inconsiderate behavior that's the issue, and that's what you should be on the lookout for. Let me give you an example. So I would like to be very clear with my terms. I would like to refer very specifically to one thing, and that is what I believe socialism is meant to be. Collective ownership of the means of production. In short, I want market socialism. I want every business in this country, and hopefully the world, God willing, 
to be mandated by the state to be under the ownership of all who work there. And that is it. That is all I ask for. Market socialism. Equal and fair ownership of all enterprises midst those who work within them. I can speak up on this. This triggers the fuck out of me. I mean, there's very, very yeah, few... Well, yeah, yeah, you go look up data. You can Google it. It's really easy. Well, yeah, yeah, you go look up data uh, on the decriminalization... Excuse me, sorry, burp. A decriminalization and legalization of sex work in countries that didn't have those prior, they, in pretty much every instance, correspond as long as law okay, enforcement are given decent resources that with a uh, with a substantial reduction in sex slavery and abuse within the industry you go look up data data i can speak up on this this triggers the fuck out of me um, because you can't really do it like do you think when romania was uh, under socialism and they did nationalize housing like you legitimately did not own the house that you are into you are just paying rent for it do you think that there the were homeless in. people wait i don't own hmm? the house i'm in we, we live in that system now uh, in america you don't own the house you're in why not I don't because I have a landlord. Most people don't own homes. Most people like rent. All right, but I'm saying that in Romania, no one owned the house. Like there wasn't a single Romanian citizen that actually owned the house. And with all that, you still had homeless people. People were forced to live in matchbook, uh, matchbox houses. They called them. They were incredibly small. Do you think like there might cell. have been other issues that would have prevented Romania from achieving the same standard of nationalized housing excellence that America could with its massive wealth and social infrastructure? I don't know enough about Romania to make like you can Google it. It's really easy. Conclusive statements on that, but the statement like, "Oh, Romania tried having state-owned housing, and there were still homeless people. So that's why we should ignore housing. Let's go over the tech companies." Like, no. And then go like. Well, can you name me, can you name me a country in the world that uh, has the system that you want and it works? What you don't know what system that I want? Well, uh, one where the government owns all the housing. I never said I wanted the government to own all the housing. I want it to be. Well, what, what, what would your solution be then? Well, there are a number of things that can be done. So we can have government infrastructural projects in which they build out large swaths of houses in areas that are previously underdeveloped. We can impose not a. Um, I struggle for the concise term here. It's not um, uh, uh, um, uh, a rent ceiling. Uh, what, what is it called? It's not a, um, a maximum rent. It's a system by which you zone off areas for different levels of development to ensure that poor people aren't like driven out of the, the communities that they grew up in as things get gentrified. Like community owned housing it, would be a long, like big step forward. These are all like big social issues. Why is there tech a country companies? That, that has the system that you propose? that you can say so so i can think about it and it's like yeah you know i want like that country to be no i cannot at this moment point to a country that i can think of wait wait wait, wait. The, my suggestion of community like housing projects is not like full state socialism we don't need to this is a very boomer like complaint here like like, well, my, my point is that whenever the government is trying to interfere with the free economy, it's usually ending up with people profiting no. from it. It's like, well, think again, sunshine. You don't understand it. You don't understand it. And you're not that good. And then when the Marxists say, well, that wasn't real Marxism, what it really means, and I've thought about this for a long time, it's the most arrogant possible statement anyone could ever make. It means, if I would have been in Stalin's position, I would have ushered in the damn utopia instead, instead of the genocidal massacres, because I understand the doctrine of Marxism and everything about me is good. It's like, well, think again, sunshine. You don't understand it. You don't understand it. And you're not that good. And if the power was in your hands, assuming you had the competence, which you don't, 
You wouldn't have done any better, and even if you had, there would have been someone else waiting right behind you to shoot you the first time you actually tried to do anything good. And that's what happened to all the old guard who ran the damn revolution. Stalin rounded them all up and shot them, along with their families and millions of other people. So even if you do happen to be that avatar of moral purity that you claim implicitly, the probability that you'd get to act out your goodness in relationship to those possessed by your ideology is zero.